The original footage from this match is possible thanks to Sushi Knight on Twitch. Please be sure to check them out for live streams and VODs in the future. And we are live for the final match between Nick on Prism versus Matt Rogers on Oldheim. It's very, very normally favored for Prism in this matchup. Uh, we have seen Matt Rogers using a very aggressive list into Bravo. He might be using that here today. But I think it'll be very interesting to see um, whether or not the uh, Prism can beat the number one rated player in the world in a favored matchup, or if Matt Rogers can defy the odds and through raw skill and deck building come out on top. So let's see what happens. Well, you don't think it's based off the graded cards? The based off of his the graded cards? Oh, the graded cards yeah. definitely are an advantage in this matchup. Prism lacking the graded yeah. cards here. Mm -hmm. Those are distinct, intimidating, uh, intimidation-based disadvantage. So. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Oh, he's going to... So he's got all the D-Reacts out and the Frostfang Blues out. So he's taking out all the defensive options. Makes sense. They took out Pummels. Right, makes sense. Yeah, so now, is the issue here that we think that Prism cards aren't worth grading? Uh, that's obviously the takeaway here, Bryce. Thank you very much for uh, bringing that up. Uh, it takes the illusionist shine off the foiling when you get him graded. What's up, Bulldozer fam? We're back with another oh riveting game. <laughs> oh. We've got Mr. Nine PTI now. God of flesh and blood, Matt Rogers. First, the underdog, Nick Holding. On stupid prism. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting looking at the sideboarding thing. Um, it was actually really cool to see. What did I miss? Um, both of the players flashed their sideboards um, of what they were not bringing into the matchup to the camera. Oh, okay. Matt Rogers is not running like baits or sinks or um, frostbangs and staunches, and the prism also took out D-Reacts. I think. I hope not. Um, but he took out pummels and such. All right. Let's see this master class some old time. Yeah, Prism with the go again shields. Tome they arsenal. say it cannot be done. This is definitely the uh, the good opening play here. Um. Um. And uh, Arsling the Tome is just good here, but it'll be hard for him to get value out of it unless he um sticks a uh, soul shield early and with the hand of three auras it's gonna be kind of hard for him to protect those shields but he can flash in the uh the merciful using the um the air edition and the uh, genesis poke you heard that right bulldozer fam i love this um and uh that'll do the arc they'll threaten the arcane back off the pitch probably and then um, he'll be able to drop the Genesis and get the Tome out of Arsenal, is what I'm thinking. No Dominate here, yeah? Doesn't matter. But that means he can't pitch to stop the Arcane. He might be thinking about trying to Halo here, but it would be a mistake because it doesn't have a guaranteed way to um, get two ores into play here with no blue. So potentially, could he be willing to say sacrifice these uh, sacrifice these spectral shields in order to play that instant speed genesis? Is that it would be a really tough here? ask think, to try and get the merciful and the genesis right into play at the same time. Okay, now we might see if we can get. Okay, great. So we've got the the dash play from the spectral yep. shield. Okay, so. Now, if he goes for Genesis here, okay, yeah, that's that's the correct play, like we were saying. He could have gone for the Genesis potentially to try and just get his soul starting to fill. But um, but yeah, three arcane. And then three spectral shields will be destroyed, and then Merciful will activate, dealing three damage. We can see that Matt has the Nolwar and He had one floating, apparently. Yes, because I think he knows that. Poke for one. 
as I use the merciful retribution a lot. Yep. And, the arcade and now if the uh, old time swings into merciful, which is normally what guardians will do and probably should do, um, he'll be able to replace the genesis very easily. Now if he ice reacts here, that'd be really funny. Wouldn't really do much though. And you might not just want to give it up straight away for something like a hammer swing. Okay, so Matt choosing here to defend the merciful. Would he's preserving his HP. That's good for the old time to do this early on in the game. Okay, so we if he knows that all he's going to do is swing hammer, he's kind of telegraphing it. That's definitely a blue triumph. Um, and a herald. Okay, yep, so that's so gone to soul. We'll see if there's yep, we'll go to soul. Here. Now the key choice here is Genesis or Merciful. Just because. Um, because although he can go for Tome as well. Destroying Merciful, it would deal one um, Which is fine. Matt has three cards in hand. He can. That's why now we're in boots. Now boots. he can drop two auras here. It looks can like. A card and prevent that damage. That's a really good point. And because that card went into uh, Prison Soul. Which would be correct here. Work for Vestige of Soul. Oh. Uh, to pitch a blue to play the Time of Divinity, draw three cards, and now we've got Genesis down. Yep. Now it's my understanding this is a critical card in the matchup. It is. Okay, so it looks like he's going to forego the, um, looks like that's a yellow triumph, so he he chose to not go for the, uh, double aura on the last turn, because he's going to turn on his, gen his uh, vestige anyway, and make a shield. Now, drawing the tome here is not great, because it doesn't have a one for, um, a one card pitch for it, but what he can do is he can, um, play the prismatic here, pitching the tome, and arsenal the merciful after energy potion. Which will allow him to um, uh, this is probably get the go again on everything and the, set up the uh, uh, pretty good turn next turn. But he's gonna play tome. Uh, However, the cards he pitched were not. In he's gonna cards, choose to go for the tome instead. I don't agree okay, with that. So maybe but, you know it's not absolutely perfect, but still not too shabby. But Nick did draw arc light sentinel. Because here um, the best thing he can do is drop arc light arsenal soul shield. Is he considering just playing it out here to protect Or I guess he could arsenal the merciful. He will definitely be playing it out this turn, attacking with the auras and the shield. And then that Matt would have to attack the Arc Knight, and then he gets another Genesis trigger on his turn with with four cards in hand. Okay, now I look, I see we got nope. some very cool cards in the audience. What was that? We've got Watch Flake. Shout out to Flake. An amazing oh, just video. Uh, Pascal level one trade exam. As well. nice. We've got DM Armada. We've got a lot of big names on Flesh and Blood World tuning in, so it's great to see you all here. Okay, so now we see what? Yeah, and we see there the we proactive Arclight Sentinel here. Now, do you think is he going to arsenal? Yeah, so Arclight's fine here. Getting rid of those cards so we can arsenal okay, so the Merciful. Prepared to come in here. Um... It does open him up to the frost attack. Uh, frost he might try and does. play the merciful out of arsenal in response to the spectre trigger Matt on the next turn. Awesome. He, can pitch the um, he should be able to do that okay. easily. So get the merciful off, off <laughs> um, and then do the genesis. He's got a plan. To I'm get a uh, a card into his soul uh, and still pitch for yellow for go again. So he should have a very flexible turn next turn. Um, a very good spot for Nick. But if they go for the ice react, that could be kind of interesting. And that's the thing, Matt has to spend a turn getting um, rid of the Arclight Sentinel, right? But it doesn't look like he will. So now, so now Nick will be playing with five cards. Yeah, so Merciful and Arsenal, only valid target is the Arclight. He can pitch the Energy Potion and the one of the uh, Heralds here. I think he's going to respond with a Merciful Retribution. Personally, I'd pitch a blue here to try and get another token down. If I have two blues in hand, to do merciful plus um, token. But he's going to put uh, erudition in the pitch instead. Just wait, wait it out, see what Matt does. On his opponent's turn. Um, because he had Channel Lake Frigid out, so he couldn't do the play I was saying. So he just got the yellow out of there. So Matt sort of doing a good job at sort of mitigating a bit of the damage. But I feel this card advantage from the Genesis is really starting to stack up here. Yeah. So that's another spectral shield and another sure. card. And so his soul's filling up. If he's got cataclysms in this matchup, he'll definitely be able to get some good value out of them. Be able to play because the Lake Bridget's out, he can't play any auras this turn um, for value. Because of Channel Lake so declaring the attack point, of course. with the Genesis here gives it the go again without having to spend a card. Brains, you know? <laughs> which is really nice because he can arsenal the parable while still attacking with three things. And he'll be able to, um, if he pops Genesis or Merciful next turn, replace it with a parable. He can also use it to create a shield um, if he wants to as well. Now I can see a Zealous Spell between Rising Strike here. Yep. 
and there it goes. So he's definitely running library in this matchup. Um, he's going to try and find it, I imagine. It's probably a couple turns away, on average, two turns, likely. Oldheim shouldn't be able to keep um, Lake Bridge alive this turn. Similar sort of guns, uh, you know, using the pistols and the boost and killing the auras at the end. Oh, CNC. Like, okay, so we've got a zealous Falcon now. That has gone zealous. Because they disable with uh, Pitch to play it, mm -hmm. which has uh, enough seven attack. I think you just let the zealous hit and here. I think you just give up the shields here. and threaten the arcane. I don't think you even play into this. So the phantasmal footsteps is available to defend this, but of course, with the channel like Bridget out, it does get a bit more expensive, doesn't it? It does. I think, Nick. Is definitely contemplating on just defending, keeping the shields alive. Because he's probably thinking, look, you know, there's only one card in the pitch zone, and it's not an ice card right now. Yeah, you I'm can block it, but it's only two actually, shields, really and you that know that, that you have Lake Bridget under yourself. So it looks like Matt does have so, and he might be able to pull and might, might be able to get three attacks this example, turn with the E strike and then kill a mercy retribution. Yes. Oh, actually, actually, I'm guessing the Genesis might be there. Depending on what that yeah, last yeah, card in his hand is. Will be the would be the card he would choose to destroy. As long as one of those two cards is uh, blue pitch, it should be good. Yeah, the last card of Matt's hand has to be blue because it's the CNC and the E strike. Oh, uh, I didn't see the CNC. Now, this is fine here because if this six block fully stops the Zealous here, right, as it is, um, then the um and i think that we, we've seen sort of if the old comes in with like e strike for five matchup where you know he I've can be happy getting rid of the um the two shields and then if he pops the genesis or something correct he can um so nick chooses to defend for six play the lake bridge here makes things a bit awkward well lake channel's dying at the end of this turn yeah but it's still around during this turn so yeah he pops genesis this turn it can really um, now, um, mess up I his resources here. I mean, there's no world where he doesn't at least pop that. There might have been a. Uh, Do you think it's three reds in his hand? Mm, if it is, then this makes his turn a lot less um, spicy. Yeah. Because, I mean, if he had a blue pitch, I think he would have went ahead and shipped it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Really think that. Yeah, so there's into the Genesis. So he has the yeah. Do you think it's? Oh, it's. He, he just keeps. He just keeps everything here. Next turn, you play the um, the parable out, I think, and you just swing wide with everything, or you pitch one. Um, oh, he's got Oak and Old online. Yeah, he's preparing for the Blizzard uh, response here by keeping the yellow in hand. And also, the Merciful can replace Merciful if he, does, if he lacks the go again next turn. Uh, he does need to start using the soul. Uh, if he doesn't use the soul every turn, he's not going to really get value out of it. Um, unless he's saving up for double Cataclysm. It really stacks up very quickly. It gets, so being able to negate two of these each turn just by pitching a card seems very strong. Yes, gets re gets really out of control uh, if you just keep leaking damage and then suddenly you're on what so, so, like 10, 15, da 15 life and then. Do we know what's in Prison's arsenal? Get scary. Uh, parable of um, humility. Just one note on the equipment here. Okay. See Nick is choosing to use bring me. I've is been saying this ever since uh, we've seen this guy play. I think it's a very low value card in this matchup. Um, mm -hmm. Compared to like a Glisten or something. Right. Um, like if he's able to protect those tokens every turn, being able to swing for free, even with a zero card hand, is really strong. Pops the Merciful. Yeah, pitching the Vestige on. For that king damage. And, here we go. and now we get a replacement aura and a replacement aura. Okay. Which is great. And then. That's good. It's just more Kadachis at this now point. Um, if that's a yellow, he pitches. Does he have to get go again? He just oh. pitch stacked a, a fused oak and old for later. Mm -hmm. Because if not, there may have been a slight misstep here. Yeah, I think you always just make the shield and, and ship it here. I don't think you ever worry about the, the blizzard one card hand like this. Yeah, and it's far for me to criticize. You got two auras out. You're always pretty happy. Yeah, like if that parable was a glisten here, he would be just in 
really I dominant position. Alright, the game's starting to slip. Yeah. He took that damage for a reason. He's got something going on this turn. Yeah, you've, you've got to make two attacks to even stay in this game. He has to push through now while he has HP. And if he tries to push through now and he taps out, then the Ode comes down and he eats 8 more damage, or 10 more, if he hero powers as well. So, yeah, this is where the Prism Oldheim matchup starts to shine. Okay, here we go. This is the go wide oh. attack we need. Five resources in hands, we can stop five pings. But he can block six of it and be happy with that. He knows that the next attack has to be either an Autumn's Touch or the Hammer or something from Arsenal. Um, nothing from Arsenal is very scary here, except for an E-Strike. Um, like, he can block six here, float the, uh, like, a yellow in hand for go again next turn. And, um, I think it's... I think it's a C and C in his arsenal. Okay, so uh, I don't like that play. Um, I don't like letting him get, get rid of this tokens here. Those are what was keeping him in the game, in the lead. It's kind of like um, burning. It's like chain soul shackling, like every turn. If you let your shields die, like you're burning. Uh, are you hitting uh, Ode here, or are you hitting Merciful while they have no cards in hand? Probably Merciful. You just got rid of all his shields. The Ode's kind of useless at this point. Yeah, this is the wrong play. He just needed to block. Because he's got null rune, so he can stop almost all this. Because he saw how much pitch he had in hand, so I don't know why he went for that play. Um, and now he can still swing hammer and kill. Yeah, see, that was a big misplay. But, but Matt picked the correct order to kill. That was a really bad misplay by the prism oh, here there's no world in which you want to get the ode down like uh preemptively um and so yeah you attack for one here do you block with the shield maybe Ooh, channel I have to say, I feel like Matt has done an excellent job at sort of clearing out those orders and keeping this game quite close yeah because even if he pitches the yellow here like he could have pitched um ode to wrath last turn and still swung for like six damage or something um with the uh the parable and some tokens um if he had just blocked because he either had to kill the merciful or something or the ode so he just gave matt rogers a much better line um by uh removing the shields from the board just simplified the game state the whole the whole benefit of prism is that you complicate the board state to the point where your opponent has no good options so this is another two damage. It's still an uphill fight right now. Yeah, but um, Prism cannot recur her auras, and she's already used two of her Merciful's minimum, and at least an Arc Light and a Genesis, so she doesn't have many left. Um, and the Heralds aren't really good value for her. So, like in this hand, she's got Cataclysm, which is great, mm -hmm. but it's just damage, right? Um, and Oldheim is really good at preventing damage. So what you need to do against Oldheim is build up the permanents, like all the auras, and just generate more attacks value are getting them. negative two right now. Uh, yes, but that means that it has if he has any glacial footsteps in hand, he can pop it. His cards are actually losing two power because of parable and triumph. So and so an eight would be a six, but there we go. There it is. Yep, my boy, guardian. That's why Parable doesn't really have much of an impact in this matchup. It's just not enough attack reduction. What would you have ran over those? Glisten. Seeing hit what he sideboarded out, though. If he, I'm pretty sure if he had played a Glisten this round, he would have gotten, like, nine extra damage in at this point. Does he have Glisten in his no, deck list? I, I haven't seen it. Okay. Even two copies would have been better than three Parable in this matchup. Okay. I don't know what his sideboard is, though. So that's going to give him an action point. 
and we may potentially see him he pitched the cataclysm yeah i guess so um okay preventing it okay two damage prevention here that was post card goes back on top yeah there's no reason to cataclysm here um it doesn't threaten lethal and you want to keep that soul to rebuild your shields um Create a so, shield before it goes on top. Yeah, so he's making um the earth will eat two of the, one, the, aura the correct play here. One of the shields, but Nick will still be dealing one you normally only here. cataclysm if it's um okay, if you have a ton of soul, like probably six plus, mm -hmm. or unless you're in the end game and they're at lethal and it can push you over the edge. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, so like Frigid's really good timing here. To kill, to destroy um, there we are. and, and there goes the aura. The aura so, so I can see, I believe I'm like if this had been a glisten, for instance, I, I keep saying this, but like, and Nick's hand <laughs> could, have had, could have had a token that would now have swung at least four times for four for free. So in this position, he'd be able to swing for a lot more damage, even through the frostbites, even through the lake frigid. I think we're going um, the same, and even uh, through the ice debriacs as well, through the blizzards, like everything. A really cool pushback, incredibly well. Yeah. And like right now, he's got a parable in hand, which if it was a glisten, he could have just played right now and pushed a lot of damage. So we see a command and conquer so in hand. Mm -hmm. that that might be another turning point. Is that a rouse? I can't see. Oh, Sparky hasn't right. hit library yet. Fourteen parable e pot. Something else. So Nick's really thinking right now. <sighs> yeah, the e pot is mainly useful for turning on Halo for um for Tome. But he's already used mm -hmm. at least one Tome this game, if not two. Um, coming in with the War Tomb here doesn't feel great. Because pops it, whatever. Um, pitching Energy Potion here lets him swing twice, but doesn't really do a lot. And Matt's looking at footsteps, but it doesn't cost more um, because it's a triggered ability, not a activated ability. Top competitive players may have so been channel like frigid does not affect myself. footsteps um, I know Tarek Patel mentioned on either of its effects. Prison, like, I wonder if Matt just made a misplay there if he had to read footsteps. Probably should have read that before he blocked. Mm. Okay. You still haven't hit library yet, so it's got to be like at the bottom of the original deck list if he's running it at all. Which he should be in this matchup if he's putting it in his list. Alright, we're going to see Enlightened Strike and a Hammer. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he can easily block this this turn. <coughs> um, and the Lake Bridge is going away. Oh, wait, but if he's got a yellow war tune, he can't pay for the... Uh, the soul shield off of the Odo itself. So it's actually very relevant here. And his arsenal has what? Forget. Is this the second Frigid? I think... Yes, he played one super early, didn't he? I believe it's another aura. It is another aura. I think yeah, he's so played he's one before. Just gonna give up those spectral shields, and I think Matt's gonna be pretty happy about that, to be honest. That's good. Now, Matt's the thing is, the prism can rebuild the shields. Yeah, There's only two, an and so sometimes it's worth getting rid of your shields when you know you can't protect them. Okay, so you left the shields to do arsenal. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Because if he goes and flashes something in, you could just beat that shit very quick. It depends what's in his arsenal here. I think you Open lead off by a prism in the spectral shield here. I think you prism pitching the uh, the war tune here, or the cataclysm. Okay, yeah, ode from hand. That's fine. Yep. Um, I do think he should have kept soul shield though. In hand. That was ode from arsenal. Yeah, but he should have pitched the herald in his hand. I think. Mm. You said from hand. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I didn't I couldn't remember what was in his arsenal. But it's always correct to play the Ode out of arsenal first. 
So this doesn't really do much for him here. It might buy him like a turn. But like this full aura hand just doesn't do anything. Um, Ooh, Banish is Oaken. Arclight can kind of um, time walk here in response to the Ardivore and preserve the Ode for one turn, but it, it's very low value. Okay, so that is quite Because he can't even um possibility of Arclight Sentinel earlier. He can't even try and start to go wide next turn. It would have probably been better for him to play the Ode out of Arsenal in response to him attacking the first Ode, and then had have two yellows in hand. And then pitch wide and then arsenal the uh the uh Arc Light Sentinel. Because then he would have two attacks on the next turn and still have Arc uh, Light Sentinel. Which he could potentially play with two blues. Now he's getting to his pitch stack, and he'd still have the uh, Ode to Wrath. Because now it's just a very dead turn here. So, I think that was a misplay. Because now oh, the sure. Arclights are all at the bottom and everything, and it's just like, that was just very low value Arclight. Just being incredible before I'm like, hey, <sighs> what is that, Genesis? Genesis, now, looks like a shield. blue shield and probably another blue. If I had a Heritable bet. protection on the end. So, best thing he can do here, realistically, is, um, is Ode Prismatic next turn. Just chesting the damage here. You don't block this. You never block this at 29 life. And we know he has starting a nothing. in the arsenal. Okay, yeah, because I saw he had two red cards in hand, and I'm thinking, no, that's maybe not ideal. So but... Coming in for seven. Line strike. Go again. So I oh, shit. Aura, is he gonna go for... Yeah, three attack turns pretty good here. Nick. Just to push damage. Oh, no. uh, look, Let's go. The line arsenal pass. The same. But, do you think... Oh, he left Wow, up. That's just really like that. Bad. That's really bad, though. So has he... I guess he was expecting him to flash something in. Or maybe he didn't have a blue pitch and he just wanted him to think he did. Yeah, I mean, maybe he was trying to bait a Genesis, but the double Ode here is really huge. Okay, so this might be the turning point he was going for. So he took a lot of damage to get this play off. This is actually a big turning point here. For each attack, if Matt does not defend them. Okay, so of course, like, is that ice react? No, no seeds. Luckily, okay. the shield and the crown can both effectively stop three damage this turn, and so can the earth react. So it's still a very good trade here, but now he's rebuilding. That's not good. Which is exactly what he needs here. So now he has to start blocking, um, or he'll just get snowballed here. Also, he can only kill one Ode at a time. But how many Prismatics has he used? He's used at least two. Has he used a third one? Still hasn't hit Library. Yeah. Damn. Maybe he took it out. It. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, I do. This is why I like running yellow prismatic because in these late game situations, if you're pitching the yellows early, you draw into them now, and two auras is about as good as three when you're in this late game situation. Because now, if he's truly out of red prismatics, he has to hold on to these to keep that value going. Last turn might have been the turning point of the game. Yeah, by not killing the ode if he was able to. Now he's just blocking a lot. Or it's good value block, like the armor stops a lot here, but he's not really going to be able to threaten the shields this turn. And the shields are, like we say, you know, the threat. I think you arsenal soul shield, you crash a uh, war tune through with the um, the cataclysm pitch. No, I don't like, no, 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 no. See, he has the right idea, but the soul shield is much more valuable here. He just has to keep um, pressuring that. Protect the shields. Because you're still going to get the card out of their hand regardless. Um, but you want to be able to freely pitch the yellow on your turn. Because um, you don't want to arsenal Cataclysm here. In fact, most of the time you should probably... Um, honestly, you should... Pitch the Wartune Herald to uh, Prism. Although if he gets some chip through, he can threaten Lethal with the Cataclysm. That might be what he's thinking. Um, but the uh, but if he wanted to do that, hmm, 
I don't know. Mac does have I value Soul Shield very highly. He would have to take quite a bit of damage just to play it out and then play as play, play as once again. Now it's got what three cards in Zealous in hand? Always using Zealous spells into the defend. Okay. Okay, I I guess I kind of understand this here because like he needs to maintain a little bit of flexibility. There we go. Make that block shield. doesn't feel good. See, shield is damage. correct here because um, and we do it's just threatening so much value. Rampart, and that's, and that's why he should have pitched the Cataclysm because now he's going to arsenal Cataclysm without enough soul to use it unless he halos um, when he could have just had soul shield, protect shields, much better blue. play. Okay. So I believe he did use Crown of Seeds and the Rampart. Especially if he draws a no block and hand, which he's likely so he's to. He's going to be able to get rid of that Ogre right there, which is, I feel very, very important because... Okay, Odorath's gone. Library, finally. Okay, yeah, so there it is. He's pitching a blue Earth card. Why didn't he Earth react last turn? Uh, I don't know. He wanted Arsenal, I guess. Uh -oh. How many people's watching right now? Dream's starting to lag. Yeah. Well, he's got the a blue and a soul for Tome. And this is huge. Oh my god. I think he really wants to get that to turn on the so he's got some floating, he but it's awkward because he has, he has one from Genesis. Oh my god! He chooses to pitch that because I know he can. Uh, he's got floating resources, but you have to be able to use those on something. You can't just use them on nothing. I'm not quite sure. If he he's trying to get that cataclysm out of his arsenal too hard. So we'll have to see what he decides to go with here because you know he is able to pitch a card to get down with Genesis. He's also just thinking too hard about library. He honestly probably should just put Library into Soul for Tome second, this okay, turn. This makes sense because I, I see he doesn't have a yellow pitch card, so this doesn't have go again. But he can. So he if can pitch so, what he's gonna probably to need to do here. Shield, getting, get, giving the card go, giving the herald go again. Yep. Yeah, is, so is that East Drake and Arsenal? Uh, uh, spinal. Spinal looks like. He's so right he's coming yeah. in with Triumph with no go again. If he doesn't pop the card here. Then his turn's over unless he prism abilities in response. Um, if he prism abilities in response, then he can drop library at the end, and then that'd be pretty good play for him. But he's not getting that cataclysm out of out of there anytime soon. In fact, that could really come to bite him in the in the butt here, compared to the soul shield. So it looks like he is going for the block, but no pop. He's got a double react. It's like a yellow one, which is really is awkward. No, it's Triumph. Yellow Red Autumns is for seven, right? And it's for six. So it's coming. It's blocking five. Yeah, that's correct. So I double pitch to cover the other damage. And now with the library gunking up his hand, um, the library is just at the worst possible moment here. If that was any other card, it'd be fine. So he could drop Genesis and keep attacking. Um, are we gonna see him pitch one of these cards? So now he's thinking, um, yeah, um, just yeah you just got a prism here. And just accept the fact that you missed your chance to Cataclysm. How, or to get it out of the arsenal. Cuts, you know? Am I watching Prism or watching a, a cuts here? <laughs> it's gonna take some damage here. Four? God damn. Yeah. Way closer than the other Oldham Prism match. <laughs> but still doesn't feel that close. Yeah, and there have been a couple of misplays, I think. I have to rewatch it, but there are definitely some things that could have been better. And now it's just like Library is just clogging his hand really bad, and the Cataclysm is really messing him up, too. This is really bad, actually. This is really bad. His arsenal's screwed, and his hand's screwed. Best thing he can do here is block with the uh, Herald. And uh, pitch his prismatic to uh, turn on go again with his yellow next turn. No. Oh wow. No, this is fine. This is fine. He gets library out of his hand, and he still attacks wide enough. It just hurts. It hurts so bad. Yeah. Only thing he gets countered by here is uh, Blizzard. Which he doesn't have. So it hurts my soul to see the shields go, but this will get the library out of his hand at least. 
The Let's draw a Blizzard boy. And if he ice reacts him here, then the um, the floating can be used for a soul. But every soul he uses from this point is going to clog his um, cataclysm even more. So it's just really like I'm saying that that Arsenal's screwing him right now. Check one. Wow. Well, okay, so he's finally got the library down, and does he still has two soul? He's in a good position now. Soul shield. Soul shield is ideal here. Soul shield is absolutely ideal here. Does he? Have... Oh, okay. You do it. You block this with. Um, so why the, would you uh, play this over Command and Conquer? So in Arsenal, you still got a, a scuffed card. So you just block with the uh, Air Edition and Soul Shield here. Maybe he pinged that exactly the card in that guy's Arsenal was stuck there, and that's why he doesn't want to blow it up. Like as much as it sucks, it, he's just having to suffer the consequences of his. Um, I also think War Tune's more valuable than the Air Edition here. Unless the War Tune is um, not yellow, in which case the Air Edition is the correct keep. Do you just Windmill Slam? Well, I don't know how much the cost is of Celestial. No, I think actually War Tune was the correct keep in the hand there, because he could pitch it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. No, the Air Edition was the correct keep. It was the only yellow he had. And so, yeah. CNC and Arsenal and in hand. Another shield. It's a swift shield. And just see, he's doing all the. I know it might seem obvious, but he's doing all the little things right. You know, all the things whatsoever. All the all the chip damage. Right. So now he's coming in with five attacks. Matt's blocking with command and conquer. Um. That was a yellow glacial. And that cataclysm is just screwing him. It just hurts. To watch. Block him one more, it takes one. He's chipping him down though. So, as long as he can I mean, um you kind of see it's getting a little bit difficult for Matt here, but he's doing excellent. If he can dream weavers sort of, at any you know, point here, fairly close, I would it'd be say, really good. Yeah. I mean obviously, you know, um, I'm not gonna lie, Nick does have the advantage, but I think Matt by you know sequencing everything correctly, maximizing out his defense with the rampart and the crown of seeds, and it's know, time to start using vestige to block attacks, keeping the library offline. Into, like, sacrifice, uh, speak yeah. shields. Mm -hmm. It's like he heard you, man. Yeah. Uh, this is a time to probably... Uh, honestly, he's got a yellow in his hand. I don't think he Dreamweaver's... The, no, he's telegraphing. He needed to... Um, to Prism ability first with the yellow, and then... After he attacked with everything, then Dreamweaver's Air Edition, after he used all this breakpoint covering stuff. Now he's just telegraphing what he's doing. Time, which I think is completely fair at this point. You know, you, you don't want to be the person who makes a mistake and uh, messes up your shot at winning. So is he People in the chat are saying he played ball. zero briars on the way to finals. Yeah, I believe it. <clears throat> well, I'm looking to draw sometimes. That's interesting. So okay. is he yep. going to be able to use the Dreamweavers this turn? So waste of the Dreamweavers. Which I don't know how. See, this is this is why that was just wrong play. He should have waited for the Dreamweavers until after he attacked with all the shields. Because then he could, if they got ice reacted, he could still keep Dreamweavers. At least he can uh, energy potion here. I'm actually fine giving up the Dreamweavers if it allows me to maintain the tempo. You know, I'll put that Herald of Erudition back up top. I'm just going to come in with five or six auras. And you know what? He's got energy potion in his hand. He can just play the energy potion now after. after yeah, the, the energy potion and then, will be nice to get the footsteps activated again later. Okay, so you, that's um, a really good point. And they, I mean, the energy potion once sets up like a six card hand of the way up. Yeah. And there we are. Exactly correct. And that. Oh, Shields are coming down. You might think, oh, he just wasted the Dreamweavers, but I think there was a method to his madness there, wasn't there? There was. Nick's just playing the bit. Nick's just playing. You're about to have a dominated attack. attack. If, if he gets ice, no, he drew up. If I don't, what am I gonna do? And a library is down there. Can you have an arsenal? This is Prism's time to push for lethal. She has the ability to lead with the shields. And the uh, energy potion can pay for some heralds on the back end with um, footsteps. It's, it's Nick's turn right now? Yeah. Okay, game's probably over.
Yeah. And then if he can draw off library here, it's like super over. Oh, wait, no. Oh, oh it was yeah, his turn. See, okay. I thought it was Matt's turn. He only blocked with a single card. He pitched two reds and used tunic for this swing. That's. Yeah, that's totally fine. That's rough. Oh, God. And now he can. Yeah. Um, Coming in for one again. Coming in for one. That's on three life. Just getting Oak. that sequencing. Yeah, attack. I think, I think the turn where they were both at 15 life and he passed up the attacking uh, Ode to Wrath was a really crucial misplay. Mm. But what was he waiting for? Than, for a better target? I think Matt should be able to he just went really wide on that turn. turn he probably didn't have a card to swing with that had enough to pay. But yeah, this is... Unless the prism stalls out here um, with not getting go again or something, prism can't lose in this position. I think we have to give full credit to Matt, you know, if I was on this auto deck, the deck, the game probably would have been over 15 minutes ago. <laughs> the chat's all saying so, ban prison. <laughs> what you probably do here is, um, is attack with the, uh, the Herald in hand, and then use energy potion to pay for your, uh, footsteps. Because you're not guaranteed to have a two-card hand later. Um, and a one card hand can pay for your go again later with one soul. So, I would probably use, commit the energy potion here to swing for, you know, Phantasm in six. Also, because, um, because the old time has to, like, respond to the, uh, the Herald with the pop, um, to stop the tempo, then, um, It'll tax his hand, making it hard for, for him to break the shields. Okay, so, the, uh, national, so that's the loop. National champion is kind of staring down the barrel at the moment. <sighs> Matt's trying to think of an out, but oh, I think that's a remembrance. Is that a remembrance? Oh. Okay, so I suppose he can use it for the crown of seeds and the rampant. So the fact oh, he that... actually has two cards that can't defend. He could. Parent, he's probably thinking, does he want to break the library? Okay, this could start to get very, very. Uh, they just mentioned that they have. Oh, yeah, he could break library. It's not going to do anything, though. He's going to draw yeah. off library? That'd be really funny. Whose turn is it? Is it Prism's turn? Yeah, Prism swing in six. Uh, I mean, that's fine right there. Um, it plays around Blizzard, attacking seven times for one. It's going to really put Matt on, under the gun here. I think, I don't think, I think he's... And he can finish with Air Edition with the Energy Potion. That's probably what he's thinking. So if he gets all enough cards out of his hand, he just wins here. One of them's Art of War. That doesn't block. Yeah. He might play Art of War to draw, though. No. Does seven shields here breaks... Oh, here comes the... This is it. This is the death block. Another air edition. At five. Uh, he, Matt can destroy it with phantasm. Okay, you are correct. So if he does have a card, he can. And since he still has footsteps, no matter what he draws, he should be okay. Down, Unless he, he draws like no yellows. Okay. And, and a cranial crush. Oh, is that glacial? So you can break phantasm. Mm -hmm. so it's not cranial crush too. But this just guarantees that he can't apply apply enough enough pressure to break his shield. With the footsteps, he can force through whatever he get, he draws. It's like the library. I don't think he's has he even drawn off library. I don't think he has. Twice maybe. But the shields are just more valuable. The zero block and the no pitch was screwing him for a while. And so, yeah, this hand's perfect. He's got War Tune. He's got six block. It's just, it's just over. Block. Luckily, Please Matt, block six I here, for the love of God. Any cards in the soul <laughs> but what Nick has to do, he doesn't need to. Play, play it's true. He, he's he, fine. He can, he can lose one shield. It's fine. It you just don't want to see your children. Your little know, bulldozers. It, it plays around Blizzard. Unless he's got double Blizzard, which he doesn't. But, but he does just, have the one. You can't do anything on your turn. He's got pulse. So. After the phantasmal footsteps, the spectral shields will be targeted. Thing is. If he, well, there's a blizzard and a pulse in hand here. 
Oh, what mm-hmm. the, the stream just died? No, what are you talking about? Oh, okay. Oof, my, my stream just died. <laughs> okay, that was really bad timing. Um, so, if he goes for the Phantasm pop first, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's in the walk here. He's playing Wartoon right now. Yeah, Wartoon with the Blizzard counter in the back end. Yeah, there's no out. Nope. <laughs> They're saying chat needs to stop talking some math smack. They're all saying Nick dodged all the briars. This is BS. I mean, that's just how the game's designed. Yeah. That's how it goes. It is what it is. Yeah, no, there's, there's no out here. He's trying to draw a second blizzard? Because if he goes for the pop, the uh, footsteps will give him an action point back, guaranteed. And then he'll still have go again. So, literally, what if he. Phantasm what if pop, he... double blizzard, you know? And then it's still not enough, because then he'll just draw five and end the game. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the other card in his hands are red, so it's not going to be able to play anything. No, it's a blue. Guardian card. I think Matt is thinking his only out right here is if the opponent has a red in hand, mm-hmm. and then he gets another turn, but it's a yellow or blue, oh, it's over. Yeah. I mean, I, I applaud Matt's efforts here, but this is much Why can't you uh, block one with shield and then uh, defense react pulse, put the card on top, and then use blizzard? Um, uh, you can. That's, that's a lot. Because he, he led with war tune for five. So? Um... I think he's looking through the because it doesn't, it doesn't shield, get you out of the, the game. The, the problem is, is that gotcha. even if he does that, he's not killing those shields, and they're just going to come back again next turn. He, he still has a card in hand. Another turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying he's not dead this turn. No, no, he's not necessarily dead this turn. He should have done it. Uh, it doesn't change the outcome for him to do it this way. How does this work? Yeah. Now he blizzards. That's oh, what, can, what can that really do? Right. So I guess he just arsenals, right? He can't afford to swing. And without an arsenal. I mean, he has to try and hope that he doesn't have any blocks, which currently he's struggling on the block department. But at the same time, he only needs, you know, a couple of shields with no crown. Yep, and then he's got a war tune. This is this is why we run war tune, baby. Force war tune through. Best herald. Is, it is really is. Best boy. This is game then. This could be it right here, because even if he blows this up right, there's one at least one. Most he can stop his three shields with the Earth React and a shield, and that's not efficient. So, alright. And pop the footsteps. Footsteps. Seven attack, uh, six attacks. Earth to stop two. Four damage coming through. Four separate instances. Two cards in hand. He's dead. One, two, three, four. And then... Yeah. GG. Unfortunately for Matt Rogers, Oldheim vs. Prism is still very Prism favored. And good job to Nick Holding for playing it well and recovering from his uh, 
you know, the tides and ebbs and flows of the game. You know, people can sit on the sidelines and say they could have played it better, but in the moment, Nick was able to come through and get the win. Good job, Nick. And good job, Matt, for making it. Awesome games. Final. Great job to both players. Great games, boys. Amazing games. All right, bulldozers, don't forget to like, subscribe, <laughs> and I was about to say it. Below. All right, thanks for Good watching, night, everybody. My little bulldozers.